and, and inc incidentally, I picketed President Bush w within 10 minutes of him signing that law, just by the way. But uh, I've read all those laws, and 80% of them are grossly unconstitutional. But almost none of them put us as far away as we put ourselves so we can comfortably continue to function, and therefore we let the law stand. We've challenged a few of them when they've been just simply misapplied. But look at this inconsistency. So you got these soldiers allegedly going over to Afghanistan and Iraq, which is a war that has nothing to do with our constitutional democracy. But even if you assume for the sake of argument that they're dying for the right to speak, and then you get one of these military folks, and we get this on the streets all the time, saying, you, I died for your right to speak, only don't say words I don't like. How un-American could that possibly be? You know what? If they died for our right to speak, shut the hell up and let us speak. Next call, Rockville, Maryland. Stone on our Democrats line. You're on the air. Thank you, Peter. And good morning, Attorney Phelps. And good morning, morning. Attorney uh, uh, Neiman. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Uh, thank you. Please allow me to ask a very brief question and a very brief comment. Uh, Attorney Phelps, um, I think you're an extremely brilliant person. Uh, I'm a middle-aged uh, black man. Uh, I'm not a homosexual, I'm not a pedophile, nor am I a philanderer. However, I saw you on television on numerous occasions, but especially yesterday, I was, stri stri I was stricken by how much courage you have, despite the controversy of what you're doing. Um, however, uh, when you broke into song of saying that you are going to hell, I have to, I have to admit, many of us are going to hell. I may be one of those persons. However, I do believe that um, the court will uh, uphold your right, regardless of how terrible it is. And uh, I wanted to ask you, would you consider uh, extending your campaign of protest to come to some of the black inner cities in America to protest the fanatical hellish violence of black-on-black -black crime, uh, especially in Washington, D.C., about a week or two ago, at a funeral, a group of thugs came uh, you know and, what? and we... say, overwhelmed the protesters and shot and killed one of the funeral members. All right, Margie Phelps, what's your response to that caller? Yeah, I read about that case, and it's a symptom. And so we don't, as a rule, focus our publishings on the symptoms in that measure. It's a symptom of the proud policies of sin in this nation that the young people are dropping like flies. And so, um, no, I don't think it'd be likely that we'd show up at a funeral. We're trying to go to tell people the military in this nation are putting on uniforms that represent same-sex marriage. Connect the dot. One of God's favorite weapons of his armory is to get your young men and women on the battlefield and kill them. And if this nation wasn't Bible illiterate, they would know that. We need to take that message. Justice Ginsburg asked, why go there? Because the court has recognized the symbology of context. Where the major trauma is, is where God's got your attention. The message has got to be delivered there. I'm very sorry about that incident at that funeral. It should not have happened. But these uh, symptoms, it's too late. Mr. Neiman? Uh, th yes, um, I, I would just like to follow up a little bit on what uh, Justice Ginsburg did say yesterday. Uh, you know, when she asked this question about exploiting uh, the Marine's funeral and a private family's funeral, she said that, you know, that, that she asked the question in the context there are so many other places where you can uh, express these opinions. Um, you know, th this case isn't about the, the content of their speech despite what Ms. Phelps says, at the heart of this case is really what right does uh, this church and these protesters have to interfere and interrupt and, and, and take away from a private mourning family uh, the, the right to bury their son or daughter, whether that son or daughter was killed in, a, in, in military action, whether they died of some other um, uh, issue. But it's not the content. As Justice Ginsburg said, th they can go say this somewhere else but can they say it in this particular place? Uh, Timothy Neiman is a graduate of the University of Virginia where he got his JD. Chicago, Michael, independent, hi. Hello? Hi, you're on the air, Michael. Yes, 
Um, I know that these protesters got the signs saying something about fag and breast cancer. I mean, what they got to do with the soldiers? Too. Um, I never see any of these protesters just like this woman uh, who protests against the, uh, these soldiers. Coming, I like to see them coming to the, um, the west side or south side of Chicago and do the same thing. Um, mm-hmm. and see what happens. All right, and Margie Phelps, what's your response yes. to that? I think that caller was in, in you know, saying if go into a different type of neighborhood, go into yes. go to a gay pride parade and protest there. Right. Do you do right. that, or is it just military we, we've, funerals? We've protested more gay pride parades. We, we, we've done them in Washington D.C. and New York City. We've done numerous gay pride parades, and we've picketed numerous times in the South Side of Chicago. We've hit your streets for 20 years. We've crisscrossed this nation. We've done over 44,000 pickets. Less than 1% of them have been the soldiers' funerals. So, and look, don't pretend this isn't about viewpoint. We spent 20 minutes yesterday in that argument debating what the word you means in the God hates you sign. Remember, while seven little Westboro picketers stood in the South 40, a thousand feet away disrupting nothing, interfering with nothing, over a hundred other people stood right outside the front doors of the church with a different message and everybody applauded them. Don't pretend this is not about viewpoint. This nation does not want to hear about its sins, but the servants of God are duty bound to tell you about your sins and we're gonna do it. Margie Phelps, the word you, very briefly explain the legal arguments for and against using that word or what you heard from the justices. The, the essential question is when we say God hates you and you're going to hell, foolishly it has been suggested that applied to the dead kid. The dead kid's gone wherever he's gone. He wasn't there to see the signs. All of the Westboro picketers testified that they'd had those signs in play for years, and it applies to anyone and everyone who will listen, which is what prompted Justice Ginsburg to say, well, they used those same signs at Annapolis and at the Maryland State House earlier in the day. I think it just means, and she's right, the whole society's rotten. Amen. Uh, Mr. Neiman, what about the argument that the justice has made or the questions the justice has asked about the word you? Well, I, I think, you know, you in the context of, of outside of a funeral where the, 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 the person being buried is, is the, the Marine, and when you have signs that say things like Semper Fi Fags is, is a Marine, I mean, th- that can only apply to one person in that, in that case. Ms. Phelps said earlier that context is so important in these cases. Well, in this case, there's really only one context and there's only one idea that there can be. And that, that, that these signs were directed at, at, the, at the Snyder family, at Matthew Snyder himself. And, and they, they passed out brochures and literature before the funeral to let everyone know they would be there to um, protest at the St. John's, I think it was called uh, Catholic Dog Kennel, uh, which again is just more speech directed toward, uh, toward the individuals that were gonna be involved with this protest. If they had said these things at some distance away, perhaps if they had done the protest uh, in Baltimore or, or somewhere else, it might be a different issue. But they were specifically targeting this funeral. They were specific, specifically targeting this family. There's no other conclusion <coughs> that can be drawn. And even the appellate court, which overturned uh, the decision below, on that specific issue came to that conclusion that it was directed toward the uh, Snyder family. Mrs. Phelps? Our message is for the living. It included Mr. and Mrs. Snyder, but it included the rest of the nation. There is nothing wrong under the law with taking a message to a target audience. The requirement is that you do it within proper bounds. And he just said, perhaps if we had done it in Baltimore. Half of the case was about an epic written, posted on a passive church website. That was written in Topeka, Kansas halfway across the country. What the trial court said is no time, no place, no manner can you say something that the family of the dead soldier takes offense at that's too broad. Look where that would leave every publisher in the land. 
someone called in a little earlier saying they saw her, thank God for breast cancer sign. And his wife, he says, died of breast cancer a year and a half ago. Does he get a cause of action? Because we say one of the ways God in his righteous judgments, one of his righteous earth judgments, is that he's afflicted this nation with huge rates of breast cancer. That's good Bible doctrine. Does that man get a cause of action? It's ridiculous. Where would it end? Christopher in Brooklyn, New York, Republican line. You're on with Margie Phelps and Timothy Neiman. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for C-SPAN and thank you for taking my call. Ms. Ms. Phelps, I really don't think that you are a very good attorney. One of your earlier comments was that the Supreme Court is the highest court in the world. It is not the highest court in the world. Its jurisdiction is only for uh, the United States, it's not the highest court in the world, despite your, your happiness there. And moreover, your comments concerning the father becoming a public figure uh, would be fine if you were protesting the father's funeral. This Marine was, it was his funeral. He is not a public figure. The people who attended the funeral are not public figures. It was not their funeral. Mrs. Phelps? As to the court, do you deny that you're the superpower? Do you really deny that you're the most powerful court in the world if you're the highest court of the superpower? Whether I'm a good lawyer or not, you know, that's, I, don't, I don't know and I don't care. My wisdom comes from God. I don't give myself any credit. And as to whether the father is a private figure, he's the plaintiff, sir. The question always in a speech case is whether the plaintiff is a private figure, limited purpose public figure, or full public figure. Uh, Timothy Neiman, we have this email from Leon, a Korean War veteran in Oklahoma City. This funeral protest definitely was a hate protest that is against our existing federal laws. Many of our callers in our earlier segment, Mr. Neiman, talked about hate crimes and hate speech. Did you use that argument in your um, in your argument yesterday? Well, we, we I, just, just so we're clear, I, I did not make the argument yesterday. On but your side, brief, yes, yeah. On our side, yes. Um, in our brief, um, we did talk about, obviously, about how this speech was hateful, uh, and, and it, was, it was insulting, and it, it was just, you know, went beyond bounds of decency in, in this situation. But this was not a case about um, the, the, uh, the state uh, enforcing hate, hate crime laws, or anything along those lines. This was a lawsuit brought by the family of Matthew Snyder for infliction of emotional distress, intentional infliction of emotional distress. So basically what he was looking for was a remedy, uh, a civil remedy because of the, the suffering that he went through as a result of what was done and what was taken away from him by these defendants, the Westboro Baptist Church, um, in connection with his son's funeral. So while there may be an element of hate speech to this, it wasn't really an issue in this case, though the justices did spend a good bit of time yesterday talking about fighting words, which is another doctrine, a constitutional doctrine, where speech can be limited, where uh, speech is so incendiary that it could lead to uh, violence or to fighting. Brooklyn, New York, John, Democrat this time. Go ahead. Uh, uh, good morning. I have three questions, please. Uh, first, when is the Supreme Court going to come to a decision in this case? Second. Uh, if the Muslims are able to build a mosque at the Ground Zero, which is an internal cemetery, and for many 9-11 families, that's also emotionally distressing, then why can't they protest at funerals? And third, does Ms. Phelps have any concerns that three other justices are Jewish and they may have some kind of, like, uh, bias? Thank you. Mrs. Phelps? Three of them are Jewish and six of them are Catholic. Uh, some of our signs say Jews killed Jesus priests rape children, and Pope in hell. You know, those are the facts. I, I believe we have a reasonable basis for expecting that when you sit in the highest court in the world, that you set aside your personal viewpoints and you fulfill your oath and you follow the law. So no, I don't have any concerns about that. Port Orange, Florida, Steve, Independent Line. Yes, good morning. I would like to uh, express my agreement with uh, Mrs. Phelps. I think the, the issue here is strictly freedom of speech, 